Hello and welcome to our channel. Now imagine this situation where a student or a resident or a PhD scholar is presenting a paper to a room full of professors. It's a journal club presentation, a usual one. And the presentation proceeds where some of the faculty start looking very critically at the findings. And then there is a debate happening that this is not correct, that is not correct, this should have been interpreted this, this way or that way. Have you ever wondered why this kind of ambiguity or confrontation really happens in that room? What really happens is each researcher has, its, has his or her own way of looking at things. Human beings can research on many topics, but they can't really detach themselves and very objectively assess things. That means whenever a research is being researched upon by a researcher, there are some inherent beliefs, some inherent assumptions, and some inherent interests that come into it. Some bias elements do come into that kind of a finding. What exactly are we talking about? We are talking about paradigms. When you start getting involved in research to a very deep extent, like you are so much engrossed in research, you start developing philosophical dimensions. Initial researchers, what they would do is they would just simply go out looking for some gap in knowledge or start doing a research just in order to understand how to do research. There's another way of looking at research where people are uh, looking at not uh, much of generating knowledge, but in solving real world problems. So their research is more applied. The outcome is more towards solving problems. But you imagine researchers like Einstein who would discover relativity or Neil Bohr who would go into discovering an atom. Those kind of findings are actually adding to knowledge they are also disruptive and new research would build on that. But those kind of efforts are actually adding to knowledge and not exactly solving an immediate problem. Later on, those could be the genesis of many solutions which would solve real world problems. So we have another video where we have actually discussed about the quadrants in which researchers could be categorized into. And we'll link it out. You can watch that one. Very interesting one. But here what we're talking about is paradigm. Here we also need to know what is a paradigm? Paradigm is, uh, some people call it worldview. Uh, Cresswell, who is a, a doyen in qualitative research methods and also in mixed methods research, calls it as worldview. Some people talk in terms of epistemology and ontology. To simplify things, there is a lot of confusion, of course, but to simplify things, a research paradigm is a combination of ontology plus epistemology plus methods. Now, what is ontology? Out of that entire study of metaphysics, one unit is ontology, which studies about being, whether things really exist. Does God really exist? Do hurt sentiments really exist among all sentiments? How do we objectively assess those things? So when reality is being questioned, the very existence of reality is being questioned. For example, we say, we say OK, there are planets beyond the solar system. Can we really verify which one is the last planet in this entire universe? the farthest one from uh, Earth, can it be really verified? Okay, now when we're looking at that kind of an uh, uh, objectivity, ontology says that there, that there are different uh, uh, types of ontologies. One that says that the, there is just one reality and there is no other layering to it. The other uh, way of looking at things is there are multiple realities and each reality may or may not be equally important. And the third way is there could be one reality or there could be multiple reality depending on the situation. So that's the basic three types of ontologies that researchers would take uh, make use of. Now let's look at epistemology. Epistemology is how do we learn the way we learn? That means in what form the knowledge would be most acceptable to me? Would it be a very systematic structured way uh, of assessing or measuring the reality without any bias or interpretation coming from the researcher. The other uh, element is, the other type of uh, epistemology is, uh, nobody knows the reality. And uh, the reality depends on your and my and others' experiences and interpretations. Uh, and of course, the social structures. So the reality has to be constructed. And the third element is uh, we uh, will not exactly uh, 
committing to any one school of thought. But of course, when it comes to reality, we may manage to make a very objective measurement or we may have to construct that reality by talking to people, whichever works. Now, look at the combinations. In ontology, let us take up this first one. Like there is just one reality. And here in epistemology, we say that, that this reality can be very objectively measured. That means there is one reality and it can be measured and replicated and whoever does it, does it without any bias. That's what we call is positivism. Positivism says that things can be measured meticulously and very accurately, very objectively without any bias. That's one paradigm. Now look at the other type of ontology where we say there are multiple uh, realities. It's, it's a complex world, the multiple realities and they may or may not be equally equal, equally important. And in epistemology, what we say is uh, nobody knows the reality uh, and it has to be understood by talking to people where there are viewpoints that would come from the researcher, from the participants and their lived experiences and social structures. And it has to be constructed. So that's the constructivism paradigm. The third one says that there could be one or multiple realities and they may be objectively assessed or co-constructed. This is the more practical one, and it is as long as it serves the uh, it serves as a solution, it's okay. That paradigm is called pragmatism. So three paradigms: positivism, constructivism, and pragmatism. I'm simplifying things. There are other paradigms. We'll talk later. So three paradigms. Now, now try and make a guess. There is one reality. That means there is one hypothesis. And that hypothesis can be tested very objectively. This is called positivism. So what methods would you use? Quantitative research methods. You get a p-value, right? Now there are multiple uh, realities and it has to be co-constructed by talking to people. That means you have to do a qualitative, you have to use qualitative research methods. The third one is that could be one objective reality. There could be multiple realities and either they can be objectively measured and or co-constructed. That means both quant and qual mixed methods uh, uh, research, right? So many a times this, this gets as simple as it. Positivism, quantitative research methods, constructivism, qualitative research methods, pragmatism, mixed methods research. Now that's the nutshell. There are other uh, types of paradigms. Some would say that these are on a spectrum. That means here you have absolute positivism can say realism just a bit moving a bit away from absolute objectivity uh, of reality what we say is there is a reality there is god but god we can't really measure god or can't really find god and there but god is behind all actions that human beings would do right so human beings actions can be studied their experiences can be studied as a surrogate for god that means there is a re reality but it has to be co-constructed that is your uh, critical uh, realism. Now, you move a bit further on the spectrum. Here you are constructing things by talking to people. That's, that's social constructivism. Suppose you take a stand, you become the voice of the vulnerable and you want to have them in your study. That paradigm is called your transformative uh, paradigm or participatory approaches. Or you, you want to call out those social hierarchies which are causing that kind of inequities and you want to criticize them then that is critical theory and of course at this end you have the more workable solution like your methods are flexible as long as it solves a problem that's pragmatism so that's the spectrum of paradigm you may appreciate uh, that knowing about paradigms knowing about these inherent biases makes you more mature helps you in developing a philosophical approach to research happy researching